Stars Bedtime Story Hi my friends How was your day? Did you have a happy and nice day? To make you guys have happy and good dreams, I will read you stories. So, close your eyes and let's go to the dreamland. The story for today is the sun and the moon. Once upon a time, a brother and sister and their mother lived happily together. The mother worked at a rich family's feast. And raised the son and daughter along. Then one day, a big feast was held in a rich family in the lower village, and she went to work there. Guys, I'm going to bring some rice cake and delicious foods from the lower village. So keep the home safe. Don't open the door to anyone until I come, okay? After work, their mother was going home with the rice cake on her head. And suddenly, a tiger appeared. <laughs> Give me the rice cake and I won't eat you. Oh, the rice cake is here, so please let me go. She trembled and immediately took out the rice cake and gave it to the tiger. The tiger ate the rice cake in a flash. Mom was about to cross the second hill to hurry back to home. But the tiger showed up again. Give me another piece of rice cake and I won't eat you. Mom threw the rice cake in the basket to him. The tiger ate the rice cake in a flash and disappeared. She crossed the third hill and the tiger appeared again. <laughs> Give me a piece of rice cake and I won't eat you. The tiger appeared on every hill and ate all the rice cake. Oh, what should I do? There is no more rice cake left. Ugh, then I should eat you instead of rice cake. The tiger gulped down the mother in one bite. Then he wore the mom's clothes and went to their house and told them, My keys, mom's here. Please open the door. The brother and the sister in the room looked out through the door because their mother's voice sounded weird. Then there they found a big tiger standing in their mother's clothes. 
Let's hide on the tree by the well. The children weren't visible, so the tiger, looking for them here and there, and finally, the tiger saw the brother and sister reflected in the well. Well, guys, how did you get into the well? Then the little sister left. At the time, the leaves. Fell. Right, you climbed the tree. The tiger tried to climb up the tree, but it wasn't easy. The brother said, with a trick, "It's easy to climb up with a lot of sesame oil on the tree." Fooled by the word, the tiger went to the kitchen. Put a lot of sesame oil on his feet, and then went up, and kept slipping and twisting. He kept falling on his behind. Then the sister couldn't stand it, so she laughed and said, "Hey, <laughs> stupid tiger! You can use an ox and come up." That's a good idea. I'm gonna eat you guys now. The tiger found the ox, and he climbed up by stamping it on a tree. They were so scared that they shut their eyes close and prayed to the sky. God, my Lord. Take pity on me and my sister. Please give us a rope. Then, a thick rope came down from the sky, and the brother and the sister climbed up to the sky on the rope. Seeing this, the tiger prayed to the sky. God, my lord, give me a rope too. But this time, a rope rope came down. Going up to the sky, excitedly, the rope broke in the middle, and the tiger fell to the ground. In this way, the younger sister went up to the heaven, and she was afraid of the dark night, so she became the sun. And the brave brother became the moon. The story for today is a sun frog always doing in reverse. Once upon a time, there lived a mummy frog and a sun frog. In a small pond, the sun, a little boy tree frog, is doing what mummy said in reverse every time. Mummy says, "Crack, croak, croak, croak." Then the sun follows. Carol, 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 Carol. Mummy says. My dear son, you have to sound crack, crow, crow, croak. But the son answered, "No, I don't want to do that. I will make a sound, carol, 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 carol." When Mummy Frog said, "Dear my son, come down to the ground," the Sun Frog jumped up to high. When Mummy Frog said, Dear my son, come into the pond. The sun frog ran into the forest. When mummy frog said, "Dear my son, can you sing for me?" Then the sun frog stopped singing at the moment. At night, when mummy frog said, "It's time to sleep." Shh. 
the sun frog sang overnight. Quack, 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 quack. Mommy frog was sad because her son always did everything in reverse. Then one day, it's rainy all day. Raindrops poured into the ground heavily. Mommy said, "Dear my son, it rains a lot today, so the water has increased. It's dangerous to stay near the water. You should be on the mountain." Right after this, the sun frog jumped into the water, and then. He played on the water while humming. Oh my, my dear son, what can I do with you? You will be alright when you grow up. Mummy Frog was worried more and more. One day, Mummy Frog said, "There is a stork near the water, so you never go to the water, alright?" Stay near our home today, crack, croak, croak, croak. Although, mommy asked the son not to go to the water, the son went to the water and played there, saying, "Croak, croak, croak, croak! I want to play near the water." In the afternoon, when they need to eat lunch, the sun frog didn't came back home. Mummy frog was worried. Crack, croak, croak, croak. What if he's near the water? She went out to find her son. When she arrived, she saw the sun frog taking a nap near the water. But the stork was there too. The stork was trying to bite her son, making a sound with his beak. Frightened, Mummy Frog said, "No, my boy, it's dangerous." Jumping to her son, and embracing the Sun Frog. At that moment, Mummy Frog got hurt, stamped by the stork's beak. Mummy Frog was really in pain, but she saved her son. Oh my God, my love, my son, are you okay? Yes, but mom, your legs and back are covered with wounds. Mummy Frog's leg was broken, and her whole body was full of wounds. As a result, she was sick in bed. As the pain got worse, Mummy Frog was worried. If I ask him to bury me in the mountain. He would bury me near the water," Mummy Frog said with a very short breath. "Dear my son, if I die, please bury me not on the mountain, but near the water." She finished her last word very hard, and then. She closed her eyes. Mommy, mommy, don't die! Please don't go! Crook, 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 crook! Mommy Frog thought that since the Sun Frog always did something in reverse, he would bury her dead body on the mountain so that it would never drift away while raining. It rained heavily near the water on the day the mummy frog died. The water overflowed in a flash. The sun frog regretted his past days when he did all the things in reverse. Mom, I must follow your last word. He made up his mind. In the end, he buried the mummy frog's dead body. Near the water, and cried sadly whenever it rains a lot, as it could be drifted away. So far, when it rains, 
the stone frog cries sadly. Croak, 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 croak. Today's story is about Tall Mouse and Country Mouse. The Tall Mouse and the Country Mouse were close friends, who just greeted only by letter. Then one day, the Tall Mouse made a contact that he would go to where the Country Mouse lives. The Country Mouse was happy to meet his friend after a long time. So on the day the Tall Mouse decided to come down, he cooked various greens, such as acorns. Potatoes and chestnuts, with all his hearts. But the tall mouse looked at the table carefully prepared by the country mouse and frowned. Eh, this is all I'm going to eat. What about cake or or cheese? There's no such food here. Hey, country mouse, you've been eating all these bad food. Hey, man, come to saw with me. I'll give you a bunch of delicious food. The country mouse followed the tall mouse to the city. The city was much more complex and spectacular than the country mouse thought. The country mouse said with wide eyes. Whoa! And so the house, the car, the building are all very magnificent. The country mouse was surprised even more when he entered the house of Tall Mouse. The big table in Tall Mouse's house was full of meat, cheesecake, and chocolate cake. Looking at the surprised country mouse, the tall mouse shrugged and said, "Hehehe, <laughs> country mouse, look at this! You have to eat this kind of delicious food. Here, help yourself. There are always many things to eat in Seoul." The country mouse swallowed a saliva. "Wow! Thank you. I'll enjoy it." As soon as the country mouse was about to take a bite of the cheesecake, he heard a thump of footsteps, and the door burst open and people came in. No, you mice! Can't you go away? Country mouse, we have to hide now! Squeak, squeak, squeak! The tall mouse dragged the country mouse under the table. The tall mouse said to the shivering country mouse, "Eh, it's a piece of cake. You don't have to worry. It happens here all the time." When the people went out, the tall mouse jumped back to the table and said, "Now, there's no one here, so let's eat as much as we can." This time, when the country mouse was about to eat the cheesecake again. A big shadow appeared with the stealthy footsteps. It was a fierce cat. Meow! I'm going to eat you guys. Meow! Come on, run away! Save the mouse! The tall mouse and the country mouse quickly went into the mouse hole and shook their bodies. Meow. That could have been a disaster. We almost got eaten by a cat. You know, let's just wait until the cat goes. So, mouse, is this what happens here every day? I, I, I can't eat because I'm nervous. I'd rather go back to the countryside. I don't want to live in the fear of being eaten someday. Even if I eat shabby food. I feel much better in a comfortable place. The country mouse took his stuff and went out without even looking at the food. The tall mouse was ashamed to hear the country mouse.
The story for today is a bear and two friends. Two close friends were walking along the forest. They were so close that they would share everything. Dude, we're even closer than real brother, right? Of course, of course. I'll definitely help you whenever you're in trouble because we're the best friends. <laughs> I trust you. At that moment, at first, it seemed like the wind was shaking a branch. Suddenly, a bear appeared and blocked their way. <laughs> Two friends started to run away. One friend quickly climbed up the tree. Phew, I'm safe. Oh my god, what about my friend? Well, I don't know. To live or die all depends on the haven. Uh, I don't know. Another friend tripped over the tree root. When the bear came closer, the friend who fell down couldn't find a way to escape. Then, he remembered what his father said. Bear doesn't eat a dead body. All right, I'll act dead. He quickly lied flat on the ground. And he pretended that he was dead. Then, the bear came closer. It sniffed the friend by sticking out his nose, which was wet. Sniff, sniff. A few minutes later, the bear returned to the forest. When the bear disappeared, the friend who was up on the tree climbed down and asked, Hey friend, are you alright? By the way, the bear seemed like it was whispering something on your ears. What did he say? The friend who were down on the ground stood up and shook the dust off. Then he answered, how did you know that the bear was whispering? I was also surprised. Really? What did he say? The bear told me not to be a friend with someone who runs away and leaves his friend when you're in trouble. Two friends went in silent. The story for today is Snow White Once upon a time, when snowflakes flurry, a queen gave birth to the pretty girl. She had a white skin, red lips, and black hair. Oh, my baby, I will call you Snow White. You are as white as snow. Due to the birth of beautiful Snow White, the palace was in festive mood for a while. Unfortunately, the queen passed away with the illness leaving beautiful Snow White behind. The king greets new queen with the grief of losing queen and with the pity of Snow White, the princess who will be raised without mother. The new queen had the magic mirror. She asked the same question to the mirror every day. Mira, Mira, who is the most beautiful woman in the world? The most beautiful person in the world is you, the queen. The day after and the year after, the queen keeps asking about who the most beautiful person is in the world. One day, 
mirror, mirror, who is the most beautiful in the world? The most beautiful person in the world is Snow White. As Snow White grows up, she becomes more beautiful than the Queen. As the Queen likes to show off, she cannot bear the fact that there is more beautiful person than herself. Eventually, she ordered the hunter to murder the Snow White. However, the hunter cannot kill such a beautiful princess. Instead, he abandoned the Snow White to the deep forest. Then he lied to the queen that he murdered the Snow White. Left alone, Snow White found the house while wandering the deep forest. Strangely, the house had a small door. The tables and chairs were all small. As Snow White got tired and hungry, she fell asleep in the small bed after eating seven loaves of bread on the table. Actually, it was a shack of dwarfs. When seven dwarfs got back home from work, they were surprised at the beautiful Snow White on the bed. When she woke up from the sound, she explained her situation to the dwarfs. All dwarfs said that Princess, let's live with us for a while. They let the princess stay in the shack together. Now, the queen thought Snow White was dead. So she looked at the mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror, the most beautiful person in the world might be me, right? The most beautiful person in the world is Snow White. What? Is Snow White still alive? The queen cannot bear her anger. All right, then I will kill her by myself. After making a poisonous apple, she disguised as an old lady and visited Snow White. Beautiful lady, why don't you try this tasty apple? When Snow White hesitates, I will try half of these, then you can try the other half. There was a poison on the half of the apple which Snow White tried. As Snow White cannot imagine who the old lady is, she fell into the ground after biting the poisonous apple. <laughs> I only put the poison into the red part. The queen disappeared by laughing as an evil. Seven dwarfs were in grief after finding a collapsed Snow White. They bemoaningly laid Snow White into the glass coffin and when they tried to move the coffin for the funeral, a 
prince who was passing through there found the beautiful Snow White. The prince told them to move the coffin together. And when he tried to move the coffin, the poisonous apple in her throat came out. Oh my god, where I am? When the Snow White opened her eyes and seemed puzzled. The prince sits the princess with a joy. Oh, beautiful lady, will you marry me? Yes, I will. The two of them kissed with each other. All of the dwarfs were so delighted, and the prince and the princess lived. Happily ever after. As the bad behavior of the stepmother was uncovered, the mean queen was kicked out of the castle with the red hot high heels out of the fire. Then she regretted her own bad behavior. But it's too late. Did you guys enjoy the story of Snow White? At first, the kind princess was kicked out of the palace due to the jealousy of the queen. However, she met and lived. Happily with her friends, the seven dwarfs, and afterwards, finally she met and lived happily ever after with a beloved prince. But the queen, who was full of jealousy, was expelled from the palace. With the red hot high heels, out of the fire. The story for today is grateful and. Once upon a time, one hot day, an ant lost its foot and. Fell into the pond while wandering around the pond. Splash! Help the ant! Help me! Help me! The ant screamed by pawing in the water. However, no one can hear it. At the moment, one. Peasant, sitting on the willow, noticed this pretty ant. The peasant picked the willow leaf and threw it to the ant. Hey, ant! I will throw the willow leaf. You can climb on that. The ant can safely. Back to the ground, with the willow leaves' assistance. The ant said, "Pigeon, you saved my life. I will never forget your help." The pigeon thought that this small ant has no ability to return his favor, so she flew above. The willow tree, with a flap. A few days later, when the ant was working hard near the pond, and it saw a hunter trying to shoot the peasant. 
pigeon. Here's the hunter. Run away! Run away! The ant shouted, but the pigeon cannot hear what the ant said. As the ant was eager to save the pigeon, so it dashed to the hunter's foot and bit it. Ouch! What's this? The hunter who tried to shoot the pigeon dropped the bow and arrow with a loud scream. The pigeon was startled by the sound and flew away by flapping its wings. Thank you, aunt. You saved my life. No need to thank me, pigeon. You saved my life first. I was more appreciated. Today's story is Redbin Potridge's grandma and a tiger. A long time ago, in a very rural place, the time when a tiger could speak, there was a grandma plowing in a farm all by herself. She was called Redbin Potridge's grandma, as she was brilliant at cooking redbin potridge. One day. In the middle of the spring, she was working hard, sweating, filling the red bean field with a hoe as usual. Yes, the red bean looks nice. I should cook a red bean porridge once it is red and ripe. And as soon as she stood up, unfolding her back, a giant tiger showed up and yelled, "Roar! I'm starving to death." And I'm gonna eat you right now. She was shocked and tumbled. Oh my! Please, I'm begging you, Tiger. Can you save me for just once? She was begging hard, and her body was shaking. Please, be generous. Who would take all these red bean fields here if I die now? I promise that I'll cook delicious red bean porridge in winter for you. So please, at least wait for me until that time. Then you could have delicious red bean porridge. Then, then you can eat me. Tiger took a moment to think. Actually, the tiger really liked the red bean porridge. Fine, sure. I'll only wait until then. Tiger went on his way, licking his lips. The wind was blowing, leaves were falling, and finally, the winter came with heavy snow. On the early morning of the winter, the grandma was cooking the red bean porridge while sighing again and again. Oh no. I guess I'm dying today. On a cauldron where red bean porridge was boiling, the teardrops started to fall. All of a sudden, a chestnut came and asked, "Grandma, why are you crying when you're cooking this amazing red bean porridge?" "I am crying because I know that tiger is on his way to eat me, and I'm scared." No worries, Grandma. I'll help you. Instead, please give me a red bean porridge. The grandma nodded and kindly gave a bowl of red bean porridge to a chestnut. The chestnut ate it deliciously and hid under the fireplace. Once chestnut disappeared, Grandma started to cry again. Then, a turtle crawled to the grandma. Grandma, why are you crying here? I'm crying because I'm going to be eaten by the tiger today. I will help you. 
Just give me a bowl of red bean porridge. The turtle also ate it deliciously and hid inside a water pot. The grandma started to cry again, and this time, a dung beetle was sliding down and came next to grandma. Hey, grandma, if you give me a bowl of red bean porridge, I'll help you as well. The dung beetle also ate it deliciously and stayed at the corner of the kitchen floor. This time, a gimlet hopped in and ate a bowl of red bean porridge. Then he stood right up on the kitchen floor. Next was a straw mat, which lied on the floor. And finally, a luggage carrier ate the red bean porridge and hid behind the door. When the night came, as we all would imagine, the tiger showed up. Grrr, Grandma, I am here as we promised. Grandma was frightened but said, It's too cold here, so wait for me next to the fireplace. If you stay there, I'll give you a bowl of red bean porridge. When he slowly came into the kitchen and sat next to the fireplace, the chestnut jumped right into the eye of a tiger. Gosh, my eyes! Tiger covered his red swollen eye and put his feet into the water pot to wash his eyes. And the turtle beat his foreleg. Gosh, my legs! Tiger was jumping up and down and stepped on the dung beetle on the floor and fell down. Oh my gosh! And when he was sliding down and falling, the gimlet stabbed Tiger in his butt. Gosh, please save my life! When he went outside, the straw mat covered his whole body and the luggage carrier carried the straw mat and ran into the well. Take this! Over the deep well, the straw mat untied itself and the tiger fell deep into the well. No! Help me! On the very night, the grandma said, Thanks to all of you. You guys really saved my life. I'll be more than happy to give you delicious red bean porridge every year. She was smiling and ate a red bean porridge with chestnut, turtle, dung beetle, gimlet, straw mat, and luggage carrier. Today's story is about the wisdom of a rabbit that defeated the tiger. It was a cold winter day. It was so cold that the animals hid. Deep in the mountains, a foolish tiger had not eaten anything for several days. So, he was very hungry. Mountains were covered with white snow all over, so no matter how much he looked for prey, he couldn't even see the animal's tail. The tiger has been searching for prey through the hills for days. Roar, I'm starved. I'm hungry. My legs are hurting. I'm so weak that I can't go looking anymore. But that's when a rabbit ran past from far away. Wow. What luck. I was just getting hungry. The tiger's eyes were wide and ran quickly to catch the rabbit. Roar, gulp. What a yummy look. Where do I eat first or swallow all at once? But the rabbit he caught was the smartest and the cleverest one in the world. How tricky. All the animals used to stand in line in front of her and get the wisdom. As expected, the tricky rabbit calmly told Tiger without a blink. Oh, Tiger, as a matter of fact, I was looking for you. A what? You're looking for me? Tiger, the hungry king of our mountain. 
I was about to grill honey rice cake for you. Why don't you have some? The word honey rice cake made the tiger smack his lips at a gulp. No, you came up with honey cake for me. By the way, is it delicious? Then take the lead. The rabbit guided the tiger to the pebble field. The rabbit lit a bonfire and threw round pebbles into the fire. Oh, I forgot honey to dip the rice cake in. I'll go and get the honey jar. You should never eat it because it's cooked red. Roar! I got it. All right, just go and get back. The rabbit jumped away with a smile. I'll be right back. But when he saw the back of the rabbit hopping away, she danced joyfully. Oh, bunny, you're dancing for delicious honey. It must be delicious enough to dance. After a while, the round pebbles were red hot. The stupid tiger said, "I'm hungry. Should I try one?" The tiger mistook a big piece of pebble for honey and swallowed it all at once. Oh, hot! Save the tiger! The tiger rolled around, shedding tears and shaking his burnt tongue. He was so hot in his stomach that he grabbed it and rolled over again. Oh dear! How dare you deceive me, bad bunny! I'll catch you! I should swallow it up. A few days later, the tiger got better. He found a rabbit hopping away. While wandering around and ran quickly, you bunny, you dare trick me! I'll eat you in one bite. But the rabbit smiled without a blink. I thought you were going to beg for me the life, but why are you laughing? The tiger tilted his head and asked. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Tiger, have you been? When the rabbit asked with a straight face, he answered on an impulse. Okay, I've been well, but what's the good news? Of course, I was about to eat chewy sparrow meat. Would you like to taste it too? The tiger smacked his lips at the word of sparrow meat. He was excited to eat sparrow meat and follow the rabbit again. Okay, tiger, I'll chase sparrows here. You open your mouth wide, and when sparrows comes up, just swallow them. He thought to himself, after eating sparrow meat, he would have the rabbit for dessert. After a while, he heard a sound. I can hear sparrows flapping their wings. I think the rabbit guy chased a lot of sparrows. I have to open my mouth bigger. <sighs> he thought that many sparrows are flying, so he was excited and opened his mouth wider. But sparrows was nowhere to be found, and a hot fireball flew into the tiger. In fact, the sound of ch 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 was not the one of sparrows flying, but the one of the fire burning when the rabbit lit the pampas grass field. The wind blew, and the flames gradually moved toward the tiger, and eventually, his body caught fire. The tiger was so hot, and he ran and jumped here and there. Barely putting out the fire, the more the tiger thought about it, the more angry he got at the rabbit and couldn't stand it. You dare trick me again, this nasty rabbit! I won't let it go. The tiger wandered through the mountains to catch the rabbit. Then he found the rabbit by the river. 
roar. Did you think you'd cheat me again and be safe? The moment he opened the mouth and tried to eat the rabbit, Tiger, shh, please be quiet. What if all the delicious fish out there run away? The rabbit pointed to the frozen river. The tiger forgot to eat the rabbit again and his ears got tempted. No, there are so many delicious fish. By the way, the river is so frozen. How do you catch it? It's a piece of cake. Just grab it with your long tail. Everyone grabs it just like that. First, make a hole. The rabbit struck the boulder vigorously. Then there was a round hole. Look, tiger, there are a lot of fish, right? When the tiger looked into the hole, the fish was visible. Oh, so like fishing, I put my tail in the hole and catch it. Oh my, you're so smart. The tiger shrugged and put his tail into the hole. If you wait a bit, the delicious fish will hang. I'll bring the branches to light. You must share one with me. Okay, go ahead and bring the branches. The rabbit hopped and danced again. Over time, the rabbit did not return. He later realized that he had been deceived again, and the angry tiger tried to get up to catch the rabbit. But the tail was frozen. He couldn't move an inch. The tiger had a runny nose, sneezed, and shivered from the cold. Oh no, I've been tricked again. The tiger kept whining and pulling his tail, but the frozen river froze his tail even more. Eventually, the tiger finally came out when the river melted in spring. Since then, the tiger has been running away through the hills from the tricky rabbit. The story for today is a shepherd boy. Once upon a time, there lived a boy looked after sheep of the village. He always felt bored. Oh, I'm so bored. Is there anything fun? Seriously thinking about for a while, he decided to do something fun. And then he went down to the village and shouted. A wolf! There comes a wolf! The wolf tries to eat the sheep! Well, what? Where? Where is the wolf? Stopping what they were doing right away, all the people in the village ran all the way to catch the wolf with their hoes, shovels, and clubs. It's just a lie. A lie. I was bored, so it's a joke. It was a lie and a joke of the boy. People warned him and went back. But the boy thought it's really interesting. He did just the same thing. He lied again. A wolf! A big wolf is over there! All villagers came again with sticks, but... It's a joke again! It's a lie! What a fun thing it is! What? What a bad boy! Will we never be fooled again? People said this and went back to the village in anger. Then 
One day, a scary wolf appeared somewhere when the boy was with the sheep in the field. When the wolf tried to eat the sheep, the shepherd boy told the villagers, "Help! Help! The wolf appeared. It's not a joke this time." Hey, boy! You fooled us again. We'll never believe you. Though he was keen to say, people didn't believe the boy at all. The villagers thought that he lied again and did not come to help. Eventually, the big bad wolf ate all the sheep of the shepherd boy. The story for today is a mosquito which beat the king of animal lion. In one hot summer day. An animal king lion was taking a nap under the cool shade of trees, with wavering its tail. Suddenly, he heard a sound of zzzz. A mosquito flew around the lion, which was taking a nap. Huh? So you are a king of animal? Well, I'm not scared of you. Grrr. What a noise! How dare you, small guy, interrupt the nap of the king of the animals? The lion swiftly attacked mosquito with sharp claws. However, it could not catch small and nimble mosquito. Mosquito stung the lion's ears, butts, and tip of the nose with sneer. Pricking, itching, itching and pricking. I can't take it anymore. The lion ran away from the mosquito. The mosquito, which beat the lion, boasted itself. It even started humming. Ha ha! Did you see who I am? I am a mosquito, which beat the lion. You guys all need to call me Sir Mosquito. I am the king. <laughs> all of a sudden. Mosquito was stuck by something sticky as it was carelessly flying around by boasting itself. Huh? What's wrong with my body? Oh my God! This is a spider web. Yes, the mosquito was caught in a spider web. As the mosquito tried squirming, it got deeper and deeper into the spider web. Help! Help, mosquito! Somebody help me! The scary spider was coming toward to the mosquito from the other end of the web. Gosh, now I'm dying in the spider web. Why did I brag of beating the lion? Help, mosquito! Now, the mosquito regretted its light and stupid behavior. 